Alrighty, my friends, we're going to derive the Van t Hoff equation and solve a common exam problem with the Van t Hoff equation. I do have other derivations and exam problems, but with this one, we'll start off with the change in standard Gibbs energy equals negative RT ln K, and then another famous equation, the change in Gibbs energy equals the change in enthalpy minus temperature times the change in entropy. Now we're assuming standard state for both of these right here, and you'll notice that the left hand sides are the same. Therefore, the right Hand sides are the same, and we'll set them equal to each other to give us this right here. Now we're going to divide by negative RT and then take the derivative with respect to T, so to give us this part right here. And to do this derivative, we're going to make a couple assumptions. We're going to assume that the change in entropy and the change in enthalpy are constant or temperature independent. So, what that means is it doesn't matter what temperature we do this reaction at, delta S is the same and delta H is the same. That's the assumption we're making. So, if we make those assumptions, then the derivatives aren't that bad. This left hand side stays the same. Here we're taking the derivative of negative 1 over t, which is 1 over t squared. Everything else is constant, and the derivative of a constant is 0. And my friends, this is the Van t Hoff equation in its differential form. To get it into a more useful integrative form, we're going to multiply both sides by dt and then integrate to give us this right here. And I want to pause for a minute. See, this is state 1 and state 2. It's not like we're going from state 1. To state two. I know this is an integral, so it's kind of like that, but I like to think of this as separate distinct states. Like you do the reaction at one temperature, it has one state, and then you do the reaction at another temperature, it has another state. I like to think of it that way rather than going from an initial to a final state. Anyways, this integral, this first one might look challenging, but imagine ln k is just x. So this is like the integral of dx, which is just x. So we just have ln k, remember the limits of integration, and then everything on the Right is constant except for the t squared. So the integral of 1 over t squared is negative 1 over t with our limits of integration. And here we are with the integrative form of the Van t Hoff equation. So that's cool. A couple notes here. What this equation tells us is it compares the equilibrium constant at different temperatures. We're assuming, or requiring, I should say, the change in entropy and change in enthalpy are temperature independent. This isn't always true, but we have to assume they are to get to this equation. We're also assuming that the reaction has pressure volume work only, so no electrical or other types of work, and for a closed system. Cool beans. Okay, so that's a very quick derivation. Let's do a very common exam problem. And this is a kind of typical one that comes up on midterms and final exams. What is the equilibrium constant for the following reaction at 500 degrees Celsius? And we have a chemical reaction. We have some thermodynamic data here under standard state. And we want to know the equilibrium constant. So we're going to use the Van t Hoff equation. And like nine times out of 10, you're going to use it in this form, the integrated form right here. We're solving for an equilibrium. Constant, so we k, so we'll use this equation and we'll solve for k, which I did right here. So I just solve for k2, it doesn't matter which k you solve for, I just decided to solve for k2. Now we need to know what all of these are. And this change in enthalpy, the standard change in enthalpy, that's given from our data sheet right here, or in the question. R is a constant, T2 is the temperature. In which that gives us K2. So T2 is our 500 degrees Celsius in Kelvin. And T1 is our temperature for this kind of this, not initial, but for this equilibrium constants. And we're given data at 298K. So T1 is going to be 298K. So, like, what we really need. Is k1. We need to know the equilibrium constant at 298k. And we're going to do that using this famous equation here the change in standard Gibbs energy equals negative RT ln k. We want to solve for k1, so we'll do that. And at this point, we've got everything we need. So we'll plug in what our standard change in Gibbs energy is. That's this right here. I just changed this to joules rather than kilojoules, kind of proactively, because I know that R is in joules. You don't want to choose the R that has pressure units in it. You want to have units of joules, so it cancels out with the unit of joules of the change in Gibbs energy. And then our T1 is 298K, because that's what we have the data for. If we plug those numbers in, we get a K1 of... <laughs> 
of a huge number, 9.19 times 10 to the 24. A uh, huge, huge number, barely in equilibrium here. But anyways, we'll, we'll plug it in. And we know all these values right here. Just remember that T2 has to be in Kelvin. It's given to us in degrees Celsius, but it's got to be in Kelvin uh, because R is in Kelvin, so it needs to cancel that out. Uh, so yeah, anyways, if we plug all those in, we get a value of 578. So what does this mean? So if we look at this reaction, here we have a K1 of a really huge number, right? Super long, big, and then an equilibrium constant that's not quite as big. So which what's happening to this reaction? Well, the reaction is exothermic because delta H is negative. That means energy is being released as heat as this reaction proceeds to the right. So if we increase the temperature, right? We're going from, this is 25 degrees Celsius. As we go from 25 degrees Celsius and heat it up to 500 degrees Celsius, we're going to add more energy as heat. That's going to drive the reaction to the left and shift the equilibrium to the left so that there are less products and more reactants uh, so the equilibrium constant has to decrease. Cool beans, y'all. Hang in there. The more problems you do, the better you'll get at thermodynamics. Pen and paper. Problems, problems, problems. You will survive. So hang in there. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.